The Mishnah said that some are saying, okay, Kum Len La Blat Kamoda, it's Matei Shabbos Pashas Emoid, Pesach Sheni, that we're up to Dav Samach, Tei Blat Dav Samach Ches. So we will uh, start from Samazayin on days by the Mishnah. A Uber, if a woman is pregnant and she has a, a fetus, or the case of a Yavam, she's waiting for her brother in law, or Arison, or she is, get, is engaged, or the Hachedish, she's married to someone who's deaf and dumb, where the, where the marriage is only Midrabana. Uben Teisha Shani Vyamech, the boy that is nine years old. We'll see later in the matter what exactly that case is. In all of these cases, we have two possibilities we had in the Gemara the last few days. There's Paislin and there's Machilin. Paislin is referring to a case if she was a, a, a Kohenis, if she was a Kohenis and she married to Yisrael, she forfeits her rights to eat Truma. And Paislin means that in all of these cases, for example, she's a Kohen, but she, she became pregnant from a Yisrael. So therefore, that fetus does not allow her to eat because she has a um, she has a fetus inside her, or a yavam. She's waiting. Her blood, her, her husband died. She her, her husband was Yisrael, and she died. And she is a bas kohen. If her husband dies, she can revert back to being a kohen and, and kohenis and go ahead and eat truma. But because she's in waiting to marry her brother-in-law, who's Yisrael, passes and she can no longer eat. The same thing. She's engaged to Yisrael, can no longer eat. Or if she's engaged to, if she's married to someone who's deaf and dumb, it's only Rabbanon, she can no longer eat if they're all Yisraeli. And the same thing is about a nine-year-old, which we'll see anything more later. That's called Paislin. They disqualify her from eating Truma. The Loi Machila means all the way around. If she happened to be a Bas Yisro, and she goes ahead and she, in all of these instances where the husband or the person waiting is a Koyin, in this situation, because their relationship is not that firm, is not an enabler to allow them to decoy. So, for example, uh, waiting for a uh, what do you call? It? If she's if she's a bas yisrael and and married to a coin and the coin died and she has an uber, she cannot eat because we learned more before. Either we had two reasons: either because in the womb it's still, the identity is the mother's, which she's yisrael, or because um, uh, an uber is not able to um, enable someone else to eat until they're actually born. And the same thing when she's engaged. To a coin, not good enough yet to be married, Midurabanum, and so on. Okay, let's continue. What about Suffolk Shu Ben Teshon and Yemechad? We're not sure if this boy is nine years old or not, it has the same status as a nine year old, and the din will be the same as a nine year old. And he cannot eat and disqualifies. Suffolk, heavy beside the Suffolk Shu, heavy. We're not sure if this boy is by mitzvah or not by mitzvah. Same thing. We are where we say that it disqualifies if he, if this boy is a Yisrael, disqualifies her. Or if the boy is a kind does not enable her to eat. Now, a totally separate case, nothing to do with anything we're talking about right now. What happens? We had before. There's Reuven and Shimon, two brothers, and Shimon's daughter ended up marrying Reuven. And uh, Reuven had an, another wife. He had Leah and Rachel. Leah happened to be Shimon's daughter, and Rachel was just as uh, a, a, another woman altogether. And we learned before that if Reuven dies childless, Shimon now cannot marry Reuven's wife. Leia, which happens to be his daughter. As a result of that, the Tzara, the other, the co-wife, is also exempt. But what happened here was there was a calamity, and not full habayis all of Abbas Ochi. That Reuven was in the house and, and it imploded or whatever. It, 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 um, it fell apart, fell up fell into an avalanche or something, fell on top of them. And he and Leia, so Reuven and Shimon's daughter both died. The question is who died first? When you do a we don't know who died first. If Reuven died first, then Leah became a Yavama for a second, and she had to marry her father, which she couldn't. So she's exempt, and so is obviously her co-wife. But if Leah died first, that means for one second, uh, Reuven was only married to the co-wife, not to Leah. And then, if, and then afterwards Reuven died, then Shimon has to marry Reuven's other wife. So what happens in this case? Tarasa, the co-wife, only does Chalitza no Yibam. Now the Gemara will explain each part. How Uber, starting with the with the fetus, says the Gemara the, to explain the Gemara. We just explain the mission. If we're talking about a kohenis married to Yisrael and then Yisrael dies and left her pregnant, Pasala, she she cannot go back to her family and, and revert to eat tini truma because kunure. It says in the pasuk she can go back to her family if she's like her youth. better. She's not like she, She's not like what she, what she was. Before before she married the guy, because now she's pregnant. 
So she cannot revert back to Kohen. And he bas Yisrael Kohen, she have to be a Jewess, a bas Yisrael, married to a Kohen. And the Kohen died. And if there were children, she's able to eat truma, continue truma on account of them, but she, the children are not around yet. So only in the womb. And you need the child to be born before he can, uh, she can start eating. Lay Michaela. The, the fetus cannot give it to eat. Why? Because you lose Michael, she ain't you any Michael. Only if it was born, you can eat, but not if it's not born, you cannot eat. Even though the Gemara before said we like Rabba's reason better, it seems that Allah is like Rabbi Yosef, which is this reason about you lose Michael. Next case, Hayava, waiting for your brother in law. Same thing. If she's a Baskoyan and she's waiting to marry your brother in law to Israel, it's enough to disqualify her. Pasalah, she cannot go back home and eat truma again because her husband died, because of Shava El Sevilla. She goes back to her family with no strings attached. Pratna Shemer Ziovim, she has strings attached to her brother in law. And Ibas Yisrael the Koyin, we're talking about a Bas Yisrael. And the, the brother in law who's waiting is a Koyin. It's not good enough yet because their relationship is not strong enough. He lay Michaela, the Koyin, he lay Michael, it doesn't help her. Kenyan Kaspriya Marachmana, because at this juncture, they're not, once Shimon, let's say, marries her, it's totally his wife and he's a Koyin, she can eat truma. But at this stage, it, 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 it's, it's not Shimon, it's really Ruve. And the problem is, how Kenyan the Achibu, the Torah says Kenyan Kaspri. Any acquisition you make, you can um, enable them to eat truma, but you haven't made the acquisition yet. And at this stage, all it is is Reuven's wife that you have to take over. So therefore, it's not your Kenya Kaspa, you can't have her eat. But Edison, when it comes to um, she's engaged to a person, they disqualify, but they don't enable, same thing. He passed currently, so if she's engaged to Yisrael, he passed, that's it. Engaged enough to disqualify her from eating truma if she was a Kahedis. Now, Kanya, Bahavoy, because there's some kind of relationship already in Kedushi. But wherever E Bas Yisrael the Koyim, but if she was a Bas Yisrael, and the, the one that she got engaged to the Koyim, it's not good enough to eat. We don't let her eat, even though Mahatayri should be able to eat. But with the Rabbana, she cannot eat for the two reasons: either because of what Ula said, we're scared she'll bring the food back to her house, her parents' house, or Yisrael Elim, they'll end up eating it. Or because what happens if after they get married finds out that that it, it, it's not uh, workable and there's something wrong and the whole condition gets unraveled comes out to a true on a on a, on a on a false basis. So we're up to some ches some aleph two lines from the top. The next case is Achedish if she is married to someone's deaf and dumb, which are only married mid rabbanon. So he So the, the Gemara explains each case in the Mishnah where we say it disqualifies but doesn't enable. He baskoyin Yisrael if she's a baskoyin who is able to eat true until now. Apostle, now that she's married to this Chedesh, he disqualifies her. The Kanye, but the Kant of the Rabbana, because he's with the Rabbana, that the, she's now attached to a Yisrael. But be Bas Yisrael, the Kesha Bas Yisrael, who wow, to marry a Koy and a Chedesh, like Michael, cannot give her, he cannot enable her to eat, even though the Chedesh is a Koy. Kenyan Kasper Omar Rahman, the Torah says it has to be a proper acquisition, Baha'i Lam Bar Kinyanu. And a Chedesh is not able to make a proper acquisitions, as Rashi says, he doesn't have enough. And maturity to be able to do that. Now, the next case, Uben Teisha Shonim. What exactly is the case of this nine year old? Now, there are two parts of the mission. First, the mission says this nine year old disqualifies this woman and does not enable her. We're not sure yet what case are we talking about. But then it says if we're not sure if he's nine, if this boy is nine years old or under nine years old, it also disqualifies and doesn't enable. So, we're trying to understand what exactly is the case here. Says he wanted Ben Teisha Shoni in Kasal Kadata. Right now, we thought reading the Mishnah superficially, it sounds like we're talking about a Shemeres Yavu. She is waiting for her brother, and the brother happens to be nine years old. The Ben Teisha Shoni and he is waiting to marry this nine-year-old boy. So we're saying here that what that this nine-year-old boy disqualifies her if she's a Bas Koyin. She cannot eat truma, and if she uh, if she was a Yisrael and she's marrying a Koyin, he cannot enable her to eat truma. That's what the Mishnah is saying. And the Gemara is going to find that highly perplexing. Because remember, when we talk about a brother law, even if the brother law is over bar mitzvah, he's not an enabler, does not allow her to eat truma until they actually get married. So what did the mission tell you that a nine-year-old does not enable her to get married? If a 13-year-old does not enable her to get married, of course a nine-year-old doesn't. What's the point? Says the Gemara, what exactly are we trying to say over here? If we're trying to tell me that what? That coming to disqualify that this nine-year-old boy is already old enough to disqualify. She cannot go back home and eat truma again if she's a kite. And this boy can disqualify her. What if he's nine years old? And if he's one years old, the moment she has a boy uh, uh, from her husband who is Israel, she can no longer go back home. Even the boy is young, is, is a young kid. Um, disqualifies her from eating because she's not anymore kinurel. She's no longer like she originally was. 
and ilach And if you tell me what it's coming to enable God will not be Michael. Even if this boy was thirteen years old, if it's only a shemeres yavam, it's only a yavam in waiting, does not enable her to eat. So what's the point? <clears throat> so what's the mission trying to tell you? So Amar Abay Abay comes along and, he's, and he therefore he tells us that the case of the nine year olds is totally different than what you think. Amar Abay Abay is you know you know what we're talking about here. We're not talking about a case with a, you know, a, a, a yavam in waiting. We're talking about an actual yavam, a nine-year-old yavam. <clears throat> Went ahead and married her. And, and what's the chiddush in our mission here? That if she's a bas Yisrael, she, if she's a bas kohen, she can no longer eat from it, disqualifies her. And, but the bigger chiddush here is, so that isn't really a chiddush. The bigger chiddush, that's not chiddush at all, but the bigger chiddush is that even though they're married, uh, he doesn't, and he's a Kayan, she cannot eat truma yet until he's Bambitsa. What says the Gemara? We're talking about a Yavim who is nine years old. They are married. Big What exactly do we mean that the nine year old is considered Kanuloi? Uh, is, is a mamish like married mahatayda? Because normally, when it comes to kedushin, you cannot marry. You cannot uh, under bar mitzvah cannot marry anybody. If the kedushin is not a kedushin, now why would yavam be any, the yavam be any different? And the only possible reason why yavam be different is because it's not a marriage that you choose. It's a marriage that's conferred upon you by the Abish. It's a mitzvah and the Abish that puts her into your <coughs> into your realm. So therefore, that those poskim will take them more literally that it's mahatayda. Others learn that's only midurabon. So we would have thought, is a candle since his nine year old is now married to this, this. He married her, so if, and we recognize that marriage will be us, be um, and we know that a nine year old we learned in other places that he's already able to um, procreate. We would have thought in that case he should have enabled her to eat room if he's a kind. Kamashalan that no, why? Also be as ben we treat the relationship of a nine-year-old with her just like a mimer, which we learned before, that by a yavim, if he goes ahead and before he marries her, he gives her kedushin, it's only midurabbanon, the same thing here. So that's why many Rishonim learned that a yavim is only midurabbanon, because it says clearly here, we only treat it like a mimer. Other learns mahatayra from the line before in the Gemara. So there's a big argument. So that's what a Bible learns. We're talking about not a yavim and waiting, but an actual yavim and nine years old. So the obvious question is, <clears throat> If a nine-year-old, Rob is going to ask a very simple question. If a nine-year-old cannot, um, uh, what do you call it, enable her to eat truma, then why does the mission say, and if we're not sure if this boy is nine years old or not, would, will not enable her to eat truma? Even if we definitely know he's nine years old, he does not enable her to eat truma. So what's the point? We're not sure if he's over nine or under nine, therefore we treat it the, like, like over nine and cannot eat truma. What does it mean? Under nine, over nine, neither of them can give an able to eat truma. So what's the what's the shot in the Mishnah? Amalei Rabbi, I hachi so say for the next line in the Mishnah, the Tani word says, Safik ben Teshani Merchad Safi Einu. We're not sure if it's if it's nine years old or not. Doesn't make sense. And and we're what we're machno. We say he doesn't enable eat truma. Hash tovade ben Tesla Michael. If you tell me a nine year old cannot enable to eat truma, something but you got to tell me that we're not sure if nine years old does not enable to eat truma. El Amalei Rabbi. So I'll I'll give you another shot here. We're not we're. We're talking the next Mishnah that you're going to learn tomorrow. We talk about people who uh, if, who are, are not allowed to marry her, and if they have any relations with her, they disqualify her from marrying a kohen, a mamzer, for example. She's not allowed to marry a, a woman. Is not allowed, a Yisrael is not allowed to marry a mamzer, and if a mamzer lives with somebody with um, with this woman, she's disqualified from ever marrying a kohen or from eating truma. So Rav says that this line in the Mishnah is actually is, is really connected to the next Mishnah, and we're talking about nothing to do with the case of the We're talking about psulim, is that if, if this nine-year-old boy was a puzzle, was a mamzer, or any of the other psulim that says next Mishnah, if this boy was nine years old, he already disqualifies her that she can never marry a coin, cannot eat from anymore. That's what it means. Elam and that's why if we have a suffix, if he's nine, under nine, that doesn't have any, any bearing. Over nine does. We're going to be machman and say, you cannot marry a kai. The bentation of the the hand of psulim, we're talking about the future psulim. The possible be the yasin, which any one of them has a relation with this woman, they disqualify from marrying a queen. Okay, Tanya, like you actually learned in the Braise, um, if a nine-year-old boy who happened to be a ger amayni, a convert from Amun. <coughs> Now, a convert from Amun or Moyev is not allowed to marry a Yisrael. Only 
the women from Ammon and Moab are allowed to uh, convert and marry Israel, but not the males. And if this nine-year-old boy that, that um, had had um, had relations with a woman, which is Aser, she is now disqualified from eating truma or from marrying a coin. Or a mitzi, a daimi, where there's a positive mitzvah that the mitzi till the third generation should not marry into the Jewish fold. Kusi, according to those who say that they were fake gerim, they were gerim arayas, they were scared of lions, so they converted thinking that they'll get the sympathy of the Eden, not because they were genuine. The sin, the nation of the sinim who masqueraded as if they lived far away, they came to Moshe Rabbeinu, the times of Yeshua. Cholo, somebody, if a Koyin married uh, a divorcee, the child that they produce is a cholo, or a mamzer. Or a mamzer, shebo al kahenis levi of Israel. If they have, if this nine-year-old boy has a relation with a kahenis or levi of Israel, it disqualifies them for ever marrying a kohen. And that's what the mission is saying that nine years old is already enough. And 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 that's what the mission is saying. But if we're not sure it's nine years old, we'll be mach. Says the Gemara. But if you look in the next mission, if I may be totally safe, it says in the next. It says in, in the next mission. Im einon ruin. Love be Israel, Harayla Plaisli. It says, and if the people that she had a relationship with are, are not suitable to marry into the Jewish people, into the call, then they get disqualified. Sounds like that's a new Mishnah. You're telling me that our Mishnah, when it talks about a nine year old, we're talking about somebody who can disqualify her based on the fact that they're not allowed to marry each other, but that really belongs in the next Mishnah. Why is it now Mishnah? Miklal the Rashi loves almost getting the point. It says that these are the, these are the ones that passel. It means the previous mission is not talking about the ones who passel. And you tell me that the nine year old case is talking about a nine year old who is who is a uh, you know usher to the woman. Gemara says Rashi psuleko safe psulekuna. The first part of the Mishnah, when it says a nine-year-old, we're talking about all these psulim that, you know, they're not allowed to marry into the call. For example, a mamzer, an amaini, oh, they're not allowed to marry the call. And that's what we're talking about a nine-year-old. The next Mishnah is talking about a cholo. A cholo is allowed to marry into the call. A koyin who, uh, um, who married the divorcee. That child can marry anybody he wants, except if it's a daughter, cannot marry a koyin. So that is limited to Tsule Kol. So the next Mishnah, which says the following apostle, we're talking about Tsule Kol. That's a Rashi writes. Okay, Gufa, now we're going to analyze this Bryce. And when you go a bit further, and that's the next whole Gemara, we're trying to understand this Bryce. So part of it you learn today, and part of it you learn tomorrow. Gufa, let's analyze the Bryce opinion number one. Ben Teshon Yemecha, the nine year old, Gaila, my name of you, a convert from Ammon and Moya, Mitzri, Daimi, Kusi, Nosin, Chol, Mamzer, Shebo, they had any relations, even a one night stand, like Hennes, Levi, say, remember, it's even a one night, even a one off, a one off relationship is sufficient to disqualify her from eating Truman or from ever marrying a Koyim. Al Kehennes, so when it comes to Kehennes, we're talking about two things, disqualifying from eating Truman, and we're also talking about that she cannot marry a Koyim. Levia the Israelis, generally we're talking about that they cannot marry a kite. Is uh, the Denise and all of these cases is a uh, Pesalua, they passed it. Okay. Then we have Rabbi Yaisi, and tomorrow's Gemara, the Mara will explain what Rabbi Yaisi adds. Rabbi Yaisi says, Kol Shazare Pasal, this is the rule. If these two people have a, would have gotten married and the child that they would have produced would have been Pasal, then Paisal. Then, then the father, the, just by having this relationship already, disqualifies this woman if she's a Kehennis. And then this guy leaves, dies, whatever it is, she's already disqualified. Cannot eat truma, cannot marry a queen. But kosher ain't zari puzzle. If they produce a child, that child would not have been puzzle. Ain't a puzzle. Then it does not disqualify the, the father with having this relationship with this woman will not disqualify. The Gemara will tell us later what we're talking about here is according to Rabbi Yesi, which he argues on the cover, is when it comes to a mitzri, we say the third generation can be accepted in the fold, but the first and the second generation, they converted fine, but they cannot marry in the fold. So what happens if a second generation mitzri marries a, a Jewish person, a, a, a Yisro? It's Asr. But the child that they produce is a third generation, and that child is not possible anymore. That child, a third generation, can marry into the call. So according to Tanakama, because it's an Avera for the, for the second generation Mitzi to marry a woman, he disqualified her from ever marrying a Koyin or eating Truma. But according to Rabbi Yesi, because the child from that union is permitted to join uh, Am Yisrael, so therefore the, the, the father, even though he didn't commit an Isra by living with this woman, nevertheless, he doesn't disqualify. If he dies, she can go ahead and uh, eat a Truma or marry a Koyin. 
Rabbi Shimon Megamil has a third opinion. He says, if the daughter, if you allowed, if they would have uh, they had this illicit relationship and if they would have produced a girl, that girl would have been permitted to marry Amisro, then the woman that he that the father had a relationship with does not become disqualified for marrying the coin. But if you're not allowed to marry the daughter, then you cannot marry his wife. And what's he saying? He's adding, as I'm going to explain tomorrow, what about, we know that when it comes to Mayav and it comes to Amun, if, the, the, if they had a daughter, a, a person from Mayav converted, cannot marry a Jewish girl. But if they, and they have a son, the same thing, cannot marry a Jewish girl. But if they had a daughter, they could. So according to Shimon and Gamliel, since if they would have had a daughter, she can, like Rus, she can go ahead and marry anybody from the Israel. Therefore, the father had an illicit relationship with the mother. She's not disqualified. Okay, we're up to two dots. Says the mother, how do you know that if a woman had an illicit relationship with somebody that's forbidden to her, how do you know that she's now disqualified from meeting Truma? And how do you know that she cannot marry a coin? Now, there's a big argument in the halacha whether it comes under the banner of zaina. If she had an illicit relationship, she becomes a zaina. The Torah says a coin is not allowed to marry a zaina, which is you get malchus, you get 39 lashes. Or is it uh, under hollow, also get lashes? Or is it under the pasik we'll learn over here? Says how do you know? There's a pasik, we're going to have three psukim here. We're going to, we're going to talk, we're going to focus on truma. And then use that as a springboard to talk about marrying a coin. Because Truma and Koyin, as you will conclude, are, are, are really one and the same. Truma, you can only eat because you have the sanctity of a coin. And if, and if you don't have the sanctity, you cannot marry coin either. So Truma and, and, and Kuna come together. So we need to know that if a Bas coin marries a Yisro, she forfeits her rights to eat Truma. How do we know that? We need a Pasuk for that. And then we need a Pasuk. <clears throat> that if the, her husband dies, she reverts back to, the, if there's no children, she goes back to the original family and she could eat truma. And then we need a positive, but if she lived together with someone in sin, then she can never eat truma again. Okay, so we need a few psukim here. Says the Gemara, how do you know? Oh my God, the very first possible we're going to bring now, it's like this. Koyin, a kohenes, kesi yeli a kohenes, if she has any relations with a strange person, so what, what are we going to use this Pasuk for? We're going to say, we're talking about a Bas coin, that, um, and this Pasuk is not talking about if she married a Yisro, she loses her rights to Truma. We're talking about if she, a Yisro, somebody that she should not have married. If she had uh, a, a one-off relationship with someone that is forbidden to her, then the Pasuk continues, Truma's Kachim, she should not eat. So that's how we know that if she had a relation with one of the persons, us there, she's now disqualified from eating Truma. Once she had a relation, even once, with someone that is possible, her pasla, it disqualifies her from ever eating truma again. That's what we can use a pasik for. So each czar means to a person that is... Is she, is she still living in the father's home? No, 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 no. If any time in her life she had a one-off relationship with someone that is forbidden to her, a mamza, whatever it is... All right, come in here. So, then that's, so she, 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 she's, a, she's a woman, unmarried woman living in the father's home. She has this this one night stand that, that puzzles her from ever eating truma again. Ever, ever eating truma again, exactly. Or ever marrying a coin. Just a minute, just a minute. Clarification to somebody that she was usher to ever have a relationship with. It's not just stum any guy. She has a she has a relationship with someone who she could have married, but it, she didn't end up marrying him. That's not an that's not Isa. As you know, most Paschal holders are that a Pony and the Pony are not even our Samar territory, it's only our Okay, and we're talking about someone that is also to marry. If she wanted to marry this person, she couldn't have married this person. Okay, says the Gemara, what do you mean? This Pasik, we need general rule that if she married a Yisrael, which is a legitimate marriage, she loses her rights to eat from her. How do you know to jump to the next step that if she had a one night stand with somebody that is us, and first we got to teach the, the, the general rule that she, she marries a Yisro, even though she's a Kayin, you would have thought that she could continue eating Truma. And the terrorist says, no, that's what the Pasuk is for. Ask the Gemara, I'm the boy that don't we need this Pasuk, the Gemara Rachmana. This very Pasuk, the terrorist tell you, Bas Kayin, that a Bas Kayin, the Mintzah Lazar, if she married a Yisro, she can no longer eat. That's what the Pasuk is for. How do you know to read any more into that Pasuk? Says you want to know to teach you that a bas coin marries a stroll, you can only eat. We don't need that pasik. We have another pasik. 
What's the other Pasik? Ahi, uh, we have from the Pasik where it says, Mishavel Bey Savir, that if her husband dies and she had no children, she goes back to her family, Kin Ureha, just like in her youth before she married in the first place, Melechem Avia Teichel, she can eat the bread of a father, fa- in other words, she can eat room again. And then the Pasik includes, and Azar should not eat by it. And that's important. We'll come back to that soon. Anyway, the fact that you tell me that when she, after her husband dies, she can go back home and eat truma again. So what are you really telling me? But while her husband is alive, she cannot eat truma. So that's how we know that you, that a, a, a baskai marries a sroli you cannot eat truma. Says the She can go back home. That she can start eating now truma. Doesn't that prove to me, but prior to that, she couldn't have eaten. Says the Gemara, no, that's not good enough. Because remember, this is a positive mitzvah. The Torah says she goes home and eats. That's a, it's called an assay. And what? And out of that, you want to infer a negative, a lav, that if she, if the husband is married, if, if the husband is alive, she cannot eat truma. That's called a lav that's born out of an assay, and you don't get lashes for that. At the end of the day, it's merely an assay. We need the pasik of... Um, the first passing, Bas Koyin. We need that passing to tell you there's a lab and you'll get lashes. So, we, so again, the question goes back. There's nothing extra here. How do you know to teach you about Psalm? So think about Imahi, this other passing you're talking about is not good enough. How do you know? I thought Lava I say it's only an I say. We need the other passing to tell me a lab. Says the Gemara, no. We in, in this very pasig where it says that uh, if she goes back home and eats truma, the pasig includes the chol zar loy yechal boy. A zar should not eat from that. What's the pasig trying to tell you? That if she's married to Yisrael, she cannot eat truma while her husband is alive. So we know that. Then we go back to the other pasig. Bas koyin kiti. What's that pasig? Lizar. What's that talking about? It's talking about to someone that she's also to. So what I says, Nicole hahi. Sorry, the Kozola Yechel Kaidish Nafka, not the Pasik Kozola Kaidish. Says, Yimon, I'm still unhappy. Even that Pasik, the conclusion of that Pasik about going back to your family and Kozor Shayech, I need for nothing altogether. I need it for itself. I need it for itself that, you know, the teacher that of the Yisrael, you cannot eat. That's the Pasik we're learning out from. We need the Pasik, the Lab, the Kozola Yechel, I teach you there's a Lab that you're not allowed to be. Um, um, and, and so on and so on. You, you cannot be with Yisrael. <clears throat> so the Gemara says, today the Cholzar you need it at two. No, no. The Pasig the Cholzar, how do you know that Yisrael cannot eat from it's actually more than just two things. We need to learn out a few things. We need to learn out that Yisrael cannot eat truma, number one. Then once we establish that, we need to establish that a Bas Koyin, if she marries that Yisrael, cannot eat truma. And then the third thing we're trying to learn out, that if a, a Baskoyan has a, 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 a relation with someone that's also to her, she's disqualified forever. So, so far we have two psukim that tell us if you're, you know, with, involved with an Izar or a Zar should not eat. So the Gemara says there's nothing extra. The, the first, where the Pasuk says a Zar should not eat means literally a Yisro should not eat truma. That's the way we know it from. The other Pasik where it says, um, uh, we need to tell you that if she's married to a, um, to a Yisrael, she cannot eat. We no longer have a third Pasik to tell you that if she's involved with some apostle, she's disqualified. So the Gemara says, Vakati, uh, answers, there's actually two psukim that says the Cholzar. In one Pasik it says, the Cholzar la Yechel Kaidish. And then it's in, and then the pasuk where it says over here, in other words, a third pasuk where it says v'cholzar lo yechol kaidish toishav kaim zacher. So the pasuk v'cholzar lo yechol kaidish, the other one is talking about a Yisrael should not eat truma. Fine, we know that. The pasuk where it says she can go back to her family concludes v'cholzar lo yechol boich talking about she's married to Yisrael she cannot eat. Then we have the first pasuk we brought. What about bas kain ketilish? That's talking about that if she was involved with the Yisrael, she's disqualified for it. Says Gemara, I still need the pasuk for another halach. Not for a postula. What do we need it for? What do we learn from the Pasik? Do you know what you need the Pasik for? To tell you that when do we say you're not allowed to eat truma if you're a Zar? But if you're not a Zar, you're a Koyan, but you're an Oinen, a close member of your family just passed away. And as an Oinen, even though you're not allowed to eat Kachim, but truma, you're allowed to eat. So again, we need the Philip Sukim. Want to tell you that a coin only can eat. Want to tell you that Israel cannot eat. Want to tell you that while she's married to Israel, she cannot eat. There's no fourth Pasik. 
So the Gemara, Zoros or Madhu, I is the only thing I forbid you is if you're if you're a stranger, but not if you're an Oynan. So the Gemara answers that Rabbi Yaisi but Rabbi Chanina means Zor the Chol Zor Nafche. It could have said in the pasuk just the word Zor. <coughs> it could have said a bas ish koyin that um, it could have said just you know that after it talks about the woman goes back to her family it could have just said zor la yechabai what's the chol coming to add something what's it coming to add so the fact is the chol come to teach you that that a koyin uh, an oyin can eat so you know, kati, we know there's another halacha we need to learn which leaves us no no extra pasuk to teach you about someone that who lived with someone's pasuk. What's the extra halacha? Bakat and beboile. We need a little time to be learned. Kishihichai zed is when we say that she reverts back home and she can go home and eat and, and eat truma if she had no children and her husband died and she's a baskai. She go home and eat truma, but she cannot eat kachim. Before she got married to Yisrael, she was able to eat when they when the kohen brought home from the from the carbon shlomim. They brought home you know the chaze and the sheikh. They brought home different parts of the animal. The women also were able to eat from it. But once she married a Yisro, even though she goes back home, she can only eat from Truma. She cannot eat the parts of Kachim. And we learned that from the Pazar Cholzar. That's it. It says the Pazar Cholzar, she can no longer eat La uh, Boy. That's it. So that means a what? That certain things she can no longer eat, even when she goes home. Now, when she goes home, she can eat Truma, but but she cannot eat other things. What not? She cannot eat Kachim. So there's no longer anything extra anymore. It says the Gemara. Um, how do you know that? It says in the Pasuk, a Bas coin, the very Pasuk that you wanted to learn out, that if she if she had a one eye stand with someone else possible to her, it ruins her forever to eat Truma, and she can never marry a coin. That very Pasuk, in Rab Chizda said, in an, um, uh, the Bas coin, Kisil Ishzar, the Pasuk says, he. She should not eat trumas hakachim. So we dashen that what that even forevermore she cannot eat b'mayrim and hakachim the parts that you take out you know the breast and the shank bone you can no longer eat. Nothing to do with if she lived one night with someone that's forbidden her. Says you want to know? We're going to learn from this pasuk two things. Why? Because im ken if that's the only thing that you want to learn from the pasuk regarding kachim lichtev kra he be kachim l'teichel all the pasuk should have said is she cannot eat kachim forevermore. What's Truma's Kachim? My kid Truma's Kachim. Shamav Neitarti. So we learn two things from here. That that um, that she forfeits Kachim um, and, and she cannot, even when she goes back home. She lives with the Yisrael. She goes back home. She no longer eats Kachim. And when can she no longer eat Truma? If she lived with someone that is possible to her, she can no longer eat Truma. So we learn two dinner from the same pasta because you have an extra word. Says the Gemara, okay. Kahenis, okay, makes sense when it comes to a Kahenis. So we found a Pasik that a Kahenis lived with her one night, she can no longer eat Truma. But what about a Levia, the Yisraelis, Minolan? It said also if, she, if, if a Levia, Yisraelis, had a, an illicit affair with someone that he could never marry, they can never marry a coin. How do you know that? Kedomra, the answer is Kedomra, the Pasik is only talking about a, a, a Bas coin. Kedomra, Baba, Amara, ba, I could have said Bas. It could have bas koyin ketil lizar. What does it say? Ubas and and comes to include. Coming to include what? Hachanami bas ubas. Later on the Gemara tomorrow you'll see it says bas ubas extra vav. Coming to tell you and the koy a, a lady and a, a girl a lady or Yisraelis, those are also included in the isa. Says the Gemara keman who dashes the letter vav and tries to learn new dinner from that. You have a kibbutz. It's followed. You have a kibbutz. The darash vavin that does dash in the vavin, but there are others who argue. Says the Gemara. I feel tamer aban. Doesn't don't limit it to have a kibbutz. Everybody will agree. Why? Kula ubas kroisayin. It's not just a letter vav. The entire word of bas is extra. We're talking about over here. The parsha generally is talking about a bas koyin. So why does it have to say at all a bas koyin? Right before that, it says the koyin who will come and make an acquisition, and it says his whole family can go ahead and eat truma. It could have just said the chisia lizar if she is involved with the lizar. That's all. Why I say bas? The whole word is extra. Teach you this din that we just said that Olivia and Yisraelis also are included in the isa. Says the gemara. Um, truma. All we know from here is that they are disqualified from eating truma. But you went further. You said that not only can no longer eat truma, but that they're disqualified from ever marrying a coin. How do you know that? Said so very simple. You're right. When it comes to a bas coin, all we talk about is that they're disqualified from eating truma. But we now that we found out that uh, uh, that the same thing applies to a, a Yisraelis or a Levia, 
what way? Where do they eat truma? They're not eating truma. So a levia and a Yisraelis, what are we saying to them? When we say that you now ruined yourself, you disqualify. Obviously, we're talking about marrying a coin. And once you know that a levia Yisraelis that we include in the Pasik is only limited to the fact that she no longer married a coin, we go back to a kahenis. Obviously, they're all the same. As Mur says, that aren't we when it talks about Levi Israel, what do you think we're talking about? That they cannot marry a coin. Why not? Could the truma? If you think that the Pasch is only talking about the disqualifies being truma, benois mechel truma, you know what a Levi and Israel is they eat truma, they don't eat truma. So what are we disqualifying them from? Obviously, from marrying a coin. Alma, as more said, Alam Aloy. Maybe no, maybe we're only talking about truma. And we're talking about a Kehenis, which obviously we're disqualifying a Truma, but so too a Levia, and so too Yisraelis. We're disqualifying from them eating Truma. How can a Levia Yisraelis be eating Truma? What do you mean? Mishkach, I'll tell you how. Mishkach is la dekoach la b'shvil b'na. We're talking about a case. Uh, what happens if um, she married a Levia or Yisraelis, married a Kayan, and then... She has a son. The Kayan dies. She's allowed to continue eating truma on account of her son. But the Pasik says, but if while she was a, a single mother, she had, um, you know, with her son and she's eating truma, she had an illicit relationship, even just one off, she can no longer eat truma. So maybe that's all the Pasik is talking about truma. How do you know we're talking about that she can no longer marry a, a Kayan? Even a Levi, you say this. Says the Gemara, Mishkach <laughs> Lalachayda. We find the Ka'ach Lalbishubana, even a Levi, you say this, can eat truma because of the son. And so therefore, and the Pasuk tells you, but if she had an illicit relationship, she'd look forth, is that right? Says the Gemara, no, for that, we don't even need a Pasuk. If that's what the Pasuk is trying to tell you, that if she's eating on account of her son, if she's eating on account of her son, and if she has a one night stand, she loses that right, we don't need a Pasuk for that. I could have learned a Kalvachimer from a Baskoin. Very simple. I would have said as follows. A kohen, a, ba, a bas kohen, she can eat truma on her own. And yet we said that if she has an illicit relationship, even once she forfeits the right to ksuba. Surely a levia and Israelis who have no, in, 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 you know, in, 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 what do you call in te, um, rights on their own to uh, eat truma. The only reason why they eat truma is because of the son. But if they mess up and they have this illicit relationship, they forfeit the right. It's a kavu I don't even need a pasik for that. If we have a pasik, it must be that you cannot marry a kohen. Says the Gemara, the kohen is kavu if a kohen is the busha, the nafsha, or she herself is a title to truma. Yet possibly, if she if she has one night stand, she loses that right. They don't have any rights. It's only on account of their son. Surely, if she has a relationship, she loses that 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 right. I don't need a pasik for that. Therefore, must be talking about marrying a kohen. Says he, why not? On the contrary. The he the sentence. Your logic is 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 kape, just the opposite. What do you mean, just the opposite? On the contrary, a kahenis that has her own, she's holy, and she desecrated that holiness by having this illicit relationship, so she loses the right. This Levi, this is saying they're not holy. They're not holy. They're not intrinsically holy at all, inherently holy at, at all. The only reason why they eat is because of the son. So they 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 had an illicit relationship. Take away. So how does that affect her? She never had holiness in the first place to lose. It's, also, it's just a legal right that she can eat truma because of her son. So therefore, we need the pasuk to tell you that she loses the truma. Our question goes back. How do you know that uh, she cannot marry a coin? Says the Gemara, he heinous sentence is pure logic. Kohenes, the Kaddish Gufa Kohenes, that she herself inherently is holy. Okay, Paslav, she has an illicit relationship. It makes her, she loses her holiness. Hard to like Kaddish Gufa, but this woman over here, who's not inherently holy, then like possible. So she had a little relationship. So what happened? Nothing. Doesn't take away anything from her personally because she doesn't have anything. All she has is the legal right to eat from because of her son. Maybe she can continue. Why not? Ella says, you're right. But you know what? I'll tell you how we know. You know how we know that you're not allowed to marry. You know how we know that you're not allowed to Can you put a pair of pants in the jacket? Harvey, please. Okay. That's it. Um, There's a Kalvachim. You know how we know that a Levia and Yisraelis cannot marry a coin? We're going to have a Kalvachim from a divorced woman. And goes as follows. 
let's say, a, a, a Basque coin who happened to be a divorcee. She would tell his betrum, if her husband divorced her and she had no children, she goes back home, she eats trum. So she is forbidden to a coin, but she's permitted to eat trum. Asur Lakuna, she's forbidden to marry Koyin. Zusha Asur the Batruma. So these, this is Baslavia, this is Israelis, that they are not allowed to eat Truma. As, as you agree, we learned from the Pasik, Ubas, that a, a, a Levi and Israelis, if they had an illicit relationship, they lose their rights to eat Truma. So surely they're not allowed to marry Koyin. In addition to Lakuna, I'll marry a Koyin. Now, even though every Levi and every Israelis are not allowed to eat Truma. But there, it's a natural thing now that you didn't know anything about it. We're talking about a case where you did something to forfeit those rights. So we're saying here that, so, so the Kavachayim tells us that a Bas, uh, that a, a Levia and Yisraelis cannot marry a Kain because since they did something wrong and that took away their right for Truma, it also takes away their right for Kuhuna. Says so the Gemara, it's all good. But the Mazhim and Adin, so we know that you cannot. Learn from a kawachaymen to make a sin and to punish somebody. So how can we punish? Get, can warn from a kawachaymen? Simar so says, "Gilu nusabalmi." That it, the kawachaymen is not teaching you the halacha. The halacha we know that truma and kahuna go hand in hand. Truma is because of holiness, and the, and marrying a koyin is because of holiness. You lose this right, you lose this right. We just need what what we need the pasuk is to tell us. Did they lose the right for Truma? And once he tells us they lost the right for Truma, automatically we know that they're not allowed to marry a coin because they're one of the same. Why? What, what, Kuna, what's so special? Because of Kedusha. And why are they able to eat Truma? Because of Kedusha. And since the Levi Israelis, if they lived one night with that woman, with that, with that person that's also to them, they lose their right to eat Truma. And, and they lose their, if they even the marry a coin later, they can't eat Truma. Or if they had a son. If they had a son who was um, originally married to Koyin, the Koyin died, he had a son, she was able to eat Truma. And then she had one night stand with these people. She loses that right. Once she loses the right to eat Truma, she loses also the ability to marry a Koyin because it's the same thing. She has to strip away that condition. Says the Gemara, okay. The aim um, to let her say that maybe who said that even a mamza, these are all just love. Maybe it's only a, a much severe love. The aim, let's say, maybe the only time that we say that she's not going to ever marry a coin again is if she lived with somebody like incest, someone with Yechayev Karas, or she was a married woman and committed adultery. But uh, in, in, in a case, let's say, she lived one night with a mamza or something like that, how do you know that's only a love? How do you know that she forfeits the right ever to marry a coin again? Because the Pasik says, a bas koyin ki si amar rachman. Si it means it's a it's a word that mother used. We had it before a number of times. The condition which is havoya. You created a relationship. How do you create a relationship by marriage? So the Torah is saying if you lived with azar, somebody who's strange to you, because the marriage is a valid marriage, but it's in sin. So the only time that you lose your rights are if you if you you live with somebody that you could have married, but it would have been in sin. Ki si amar rachman. Hanar de isbuhu havoya. That only those that you can that you can uh, that the, 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 is a marriage like a mamza you're not allowed to marry a mamza but if you did you still need a get because they're married all of these things that we said before we mentioned before mitzvah daim and all that you're not allowed to marry any of them but if you did you still need a get so therefore if she if she had um, um, an illicit relationship with any one of these people she forfeits her right to marry a kain which lechayda would then mean what about chayyavek krisis. What about, let's say, um, you, with, you just said a mitzvah and a doyma you need to get. Why would why that a condition? If you married them, then you need to get. Why was so, why a condition, Bechlam, not even Jews? Because the din is, as we learned before already, we had we have four opinions. If uh, Rabbi Kiva said that condition is not chal b'chayobi lavin at all. We had Samoy who said that condition is not chal chayobi asay. But we pass him like Ben Tema who says that, that if you marry some, a koi marries a grusha. You know, can't marriage divorce. It's a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. a proper marriage. Yeah, but yeah, but, 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 but the Gush is Jewish. Adoimi, a mitzvah is not Jewish. I'm talking about a convert. A convert? You just said a mitzvah Adoimi. Okay. I did. That's what, that's what we call it. A ger. Okay, sorry. sorry I misheard the word ger. Yeah. A ger Adoimi and a ger mitzvah is, um, they convert it. You know, oh, okay. Okay. Says the Gemara, you follow your logic. If a goy, for example, has a, a, a illicit relationship with this woman, it should not disqualify her from ever marrying a coin because they can never get married. It's no matter, you just said, Kisi has to be a voya. 
Now, whether we also have a question regarding chorus is big machikas or shayim or not, whether chorus is equal to all the other lavin where you learn out all the other lavin from, or whether chorus comes from the same place as we learn out by a goy. But we're going to see in a minute how we know a goy. Now, we know that a goy, an evet, cannot get married. We know that an evet cannot, is not a marriage because it says, Avram said to Eliezer and Yishmo, Shrulachan po yemachamer, and we learn that am hadoyim lechamer. They are sim they are simil similar to um um what do you call it? they are similar to um getting what do you call it? similar to um to a chamoy therefore there's no marriage and by a goy as well we know that there's no marriage because it says that you shouldn't have a uh, committed adultery it says as of the au as if to say that the only woman that's considered adultery is if if he's married to a yid if you have committed adultery with a woman who's married to a goy it's not considered adultery because we don't recognize the marriage that's how we learn. And, and then the Rashi brings from the shelters as another shop, but that's how we generally learn. So now the question is, so if she had a relation with a guy, she should be able to marry a coin because the, 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 it can never turn into a marriage. Says the Gemara, Han of Pasim the Rishon Rabbi Yechim. Gemara says, you know what? Um, if we learn from Rabbi Shmuel. This is how we know that, that if a guy has a relation with a woman even one night, she can no longer marry a coin. And what is that? had a relation with a Jewish girl or with a Kansas Olivia, Apostle Shlemmer, it says, it says the Apostle, it says the daughter of a coin, Kitiya, this whole Apostle that says she goes back to her husband, she goes to her family, he drew it, starts off saying, Abbas Koyen, Kitiya, Almona Ugrusha, Abbas Koyen, if she will be a widow or a divorcee, and she had no children, she goes back home. That means that there had to be a marriage where it's shaykh to either be a widow or divorcee. Me, she yesh loy almanas vegadashin, only someone that can become a widow or divorcee. Then we say that what? That if you no children, you go back to your family, eat from it. Yatsu either kachav of the evid, but if she would have had a relationship with a guy or an evid, she ain't like almanas vegadashin. There, there's no such thing as a widow or divorcee because you never married in the first place. So therefore, over there, that's it. She cannot go back home and eat Truman. She's been disqualified from eating Truman altogether. Says the Gemara, Ashkan Kehenis. Okay, the Pasik talks about a Kehenis. Levia the Yisraelim. How you know Levia Yisraelim is a had a one night stand with a goy? How do you know that if they, you know, if they were eating Truman because of their son, that they can no longer eat Truman? Or how you know they cannot marry a coin? Kedamar, we say, we're people we just did before. Kedamar Rabbah, Rabbah said, Amar Rav, Bas. Ubas, the extra letter above. Bas Ubas. The extra letter above comes to include also Levi and Israelis that are included in the same Pasik as a Kehenis, that if they were living with a guy, they don't, they can never eat room again. Kiman Kirabakiva, Kamakiva, the Dorish Vavi, Dorish only Vavim. The Khaid is a very limited opinion. The entire Pasik Ubas is an extra Pasik. I think Mark is not a while, but I guess we'll stop.